Robert Pershing Wadlow, who was 8 feet and 11 inches tall, held the record for being the tallest man in the world. However, this gentle giant only lived for a short time. Please consider to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. The world's tallest man was born happily, healthy, and he appeared like a typical size. Andy Wadlow had a baby boy named Robert Pershing Wadlow on February 22, 1918. The baby weighed 8.7 pounds and was born in Alton, Illinois. Over the course of his first year, Robert Wadlow grew like most babies do, but he grew up far faster than typical babies. He was 45 pounds, 3 feet and 3.5 inches tall on his first birthday, and when he turned 5 years old, Wadlow was 5 feet, 4 inches tall and wore clothes made for teenagers. By the time he was 8 years old, he already was taller than his father, who was 5 feet and 11 inches. Wadlow was only about 6 feet tall as a child, but he quickly grew taller than most adults. At age 13, he was the tallest Boy Scout in the world at 7 feet and 4 inches. Unsurprisingly, he had to get a special uniform made for him because the regular sizes wouldn't have fit. And when he graduated from high school, he was 8 feet and 4 inches tall. Surprisingly, he didn't stop growing and would eventually grow to be 8 feet and 11 inches tall. Even when he died, his body was still getting bigger, and it didn't look like it would stop. Even his family members are all of average height and weight. What made Robert Wadlow so tall? Doctors eventually told Robert Wadlow that he had hyperplasia of the pituitary gland, a condition that caused him to grow too quickly and too much because his body had too many human growth hormones. When Wadlow was 12, his family found out about this condition. If Wadlow had been born today, we would have more advanced surgeries and medicines that could have stopped him from growing so tall. But at the time, surgeons were afraid to operate on Wadlow because they weren't confident they could help him. But even though he was getting bigger and bigger, his parents tried to keep his life as normal as they could. Wadlow was the oldest of his two brothers and two sisters, and since they were all about the same height and weight, he was expected to play with them and do many of the same things they did. He liked to take pictures and collect stamps as a hobby. And he was active in the Boy Scouts when he was a young teenager. And he went to Shirtleft College after high school to become a lawyer, but that didn't work out. Robert Wadlow became a Freemason in the end. Even though he was pretty healthy when he was younger, he soon started to have problems with his health. He couldn't feel anything in his legs and feet because he was so tall. This meant that he often didn't notice problems like blisters or infections, unless he was going to look for them. Still, he liked walking and never used a wheelchair, even though it would have helped him a lot. In 1936, the Ringling brothers and their traveling circus saw Wadlow and hired him. The Ringlings knew he would be a great addition to their show, especially when they put him on stage with other little people who worked for the circus. He agreed to go on tour with them, which made them very happy. During these circus shows, the tallest man in the world drew a huge crowd everywhere he went. Soon, he was a well-known person and a hero in his hometown of Alton. Wadlow also became a Peter Shoe Company ambassador. He not only became the face of the shoe company, but he also started getting free shoes in size 37 AA that were made just for him. The free stuff was a nice bonus, especially since his shoes usually cost about $100 per pair, which was quite expensive back then. His father had to make changes to the family car so that Wadlow could go on trips across the country. He took out the front passenger seat so that his son could sit in the back seat and stretch out his legs. Though the tallest human being on earth had a very interesting life, it was also very hard. Homes, public places, and everyday household items weren't really made for a man of his size, so he often had to make changes to do simple things. Also, in order to walk right, he had to wear leg braces. Even these braces helped him stand up straight, they also helped him fall down. He couldn't feel when an ill-fitting brace was rubbing against his ankle because his legs didn't have feeling, and that's exactly what happened in 1940. Wadlow didn't notice that a blister had formed on his leg until he got to the Manistee National Forest Festival in Michigan. The blister hurt so much that it got infected quickly, and Wadlow got a high fever. When his doctors found out what had happened, they moved quickly to help him. They gave him blood and did an emergency surgery. Unfortunately, they were not able to save Wadlow's life. His incredible height seemed to have weakened his immune system, and he eventually died from the infection. He was 22 years old when he died on July 15, 1940. And then after a few days, he was measured for the last time, and found to be 8 feet and 11.1 inches tall. His body was laid to rest in Alton, Illinois, which was his favorite place in the world. The casket was carried into and out of the funeral by 18 people. Usually, only 6 people are needed to carry the casket. And many people came to show their pain and sadness. 
Robert Wadlow died at a young age, but he left behind a legacy that was literally as big as he was. In Alton, on the campus of the Southern Illinois University, a life-size bronze statue of Wadlow has stood proudly since 1985. And at the Alton Museum of History and Art, visitors can see photos of Wadlow as well as a few pairs of his shoes, his third-grade school desk, his graduation cap and gown, and his size 25 Masonic ring. Wadlow also has the largest hands ever, from his wrist to the tip of his middle finger, his hands are 12.75 inches long. Robert Wadlow's story is a testament to the incredible power of the human body, as well as the challenges that come with being different. Despite his enormous size, Wadlow lived a life filled with kindness, compassion, and a love of music. His legacy lives on, inspiring others to embrace their uniqueness and to make the most of their lives, no matter what challenges they may face.